You guys, uh, I, I, I want to read, uh, turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 2. Uh, I just wanted to read uh, verses 1 through 12, and uh, I, I don't plan to, to, to teach. I, I want to share something that's on my heart. Uh, as you heard uh, the team share about what Watts was like, um, I am a pastor, and I, I had different eyes. And uh, I'll, I'll share some things that, that I, I just need to share with you. You see, if I don't share it with you, then uh, I, I see a, a spirit of reluctance in my heart. Uh, you need to know uh, what's going on in our inner city so you can know how to pray. Uh, before mom passed away years ago, she, uh, I, I was always out of state, you know, because I, I, I don't like to use the word escape, but I had to get out of the city of Chicago or else I would become a statistic. That's just the way it was. We seemed to be that we were uh, born and raised to be a statistic. And then so I, I was a ball player, so that was one of the things that I had that could keep me out of trouble, but still trouble was at our door. But uh, years later, after I'd gone to college, I would talk to my mom, and, and she would tell me everything that was going on in our family. And of course, it was the, the heavy stuff. And I would like say, Mom, I don't feel like hearing that. And she says, Avan, if I don't tell you what, how to pray, how are you going to pray? And, and so if I don't tell you how to pray, right, if I don't tell you what you should pray for, you won't know, right? Amen? And, and so, uh, you know, the word raw comes to my heart. And I was talking to Pastor uh, Joshua tonight, Josh, from Philly, and he used the word again, raw. And, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be raw, but I want to be honest and truthful. You know, so chapter two, starting in verse one, when he, meaning Jesus, had come back to uh, Capernaum several days afterwards, afterwards, it was heard that he was home. Well, Jesus is back now. Uh, he had started in Capernaum and ended up in Galilee, and now he's home. Jesus is home. And, and, and you know, it's, it's interesting uh, let me back up and give you a verse. After he had healed in, verse, in chapter 1, the end of chapter 1, he healed the leper. Verse 45 says, But he went out and began to proclaim it, the leper, after he was healed. It, he proclaimed it freely and to spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer, no longer publicly enter a city but stayed out in unpopulated areas, and they, and they were coming to him from everywhere. And so Jesus is home, and people know. They know the power of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we, we move back into chapter 2, and uh, the word says, and many were gathered together so that there were no longer room, not even near the door. So at the residency that Jesus is at right now, uh, it's impossible to get in. It's impossible. And, and you've seen, uh, you know, back in the day when the Chicago Bulls was uh, rolling, you couldn't get into the stadium. You couldn't get a ticket. That's just the way it was. And, and you know, usually when you got out of the, your, your, your uh, we took taxis in Chicago, not Ubers. <laughs> Back in the day, if you got to, uh, to the stadium and, and you, you knew you couldn't get a ticket, usually you just say, man, I can't get in there. I probably won't get a ticket. And the place was full. Imagine that. Jesus is on the scene, and the place is full. And I love this. Why was it full? Because he was speaking the word to them. It's so important, guys. It's so important that we pay attention 100% when the word of God is being spoken. I, I heard something today, uh, just the, uh, during staff meeting, about how to sit in a staff meeting. Interesting. 
Let me just give you a couple. Uh, you shouldn't mess around with your phone while business is being addressed, especially God's business, right? And, and, and it carries over into the church. There, there shouldn't, unless, unless you're uh, are like a heavy physician or something, extreme emergencies, right? We should pay attention to God's word. It's, it's our time of ministry. And, and we should take the word that serious, such as uh, this people, these people, right? I mean, like, hey, they wanted to hear God's word. And so he was speaking the word to them. Verse 3 says, and they came bringing, I love this, to him, to Jesus, a paralytic carried by four men. I, I thought about what that looks like in my imaginary mind. Uh, here's a man that was in need of friends. Right? I, I don't think that he could take care of himself at all. Right? And, and also thought, how far did they walk to get to the house where Jesus was? Uh, that's what friends are for. Uh, I, the miles didn't matter. And, and just in case, in my imaginary mind, uh, who was with them in case someone got tired? If someone decided to say, hey, you know what, there's just too many miles. This, this, this man is too heavy, and I just think we should turn back. Who was praying for strength? Right? Because when you want to do something for the Lord, failure will knock at your door. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. Amen? Amen. The word says in chapter 4, he says, being unable to get to him because of the crowd. They, they just couldn't figure out a way. That's, that's why I brought that idea in about um, perhaps there was a group right, a contingency that said, you know what, even if we can't get through the door, there's got to be another way, right? There's no, there's no room to turn back. And, and, and that should be a message to us. There's no room, there's no way, no reason to turn back, regardless of the circumstances. Right, Re regardless of, and then now let me let me stop right there, and I'll, I'll switch back to watch. Regardless of the drug and alcoholism, there's no reason that the gospel should not go forth. Regardless of churches closing, there's no reason why we should turn back. One of the things uh, that we saw that I, I wasn't going to share, but the Lord convicted my heart, is that we saw a hardness that had taken place uh, in the projects that we served in. We, we met a sister uh, whose, uh, her son was uh, disadvantaged mentally. And I would say that he was probably a teenager, and he did something that offended another person. And as a result of this, uh, this little teenage boy was beaten up, and he died a few days later. And no one knew why and who did it. And so, we were walking through the projects, and as a group, we ministered to this mother who had buried a son. That's why we went. We didn't know what the godly appointment was going to look like, right? We just went to go help feed some people and, and do the service and give 
uh, Pastor Jose and his team rest. That was our MO. That's all we wanted to do for the Lord, but it happened that, uh, that the Lord put this in front of us and this sister was ministered to. Uh, perhaps if we had not showed up, I'm sure that the Lord would use someone else, but thank God that because of uh, you sending us, we were able to spend time and pray with someone whose heart was heavy, such as the paralytic man that was in need of friends. We were able to gather around this sister and be her friend. That's what friends are for. All right? Amen. Well, we don't have to have uh, uh, the length of time we've known someone. The Lord says that we should love the Lord our God with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and then love our neighbors as ourselves. We learned that. We learned that. I'm going to finish this, but I want to share something with you. They were unable to get him in because of the crowd, and they removed, they removed the roof above him, meaning Jesus, and when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic man was lying, and Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven. And, uh, you know, many commentaries say that uh, the men or the group that carried this paralytic man uh, came with the purpose of healing physically. But here we see that uh, the first and most important issue in our lives, in his lives, was that his sins would be forgiven. It's important that we spend a little time asking the Lord daily to forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, because we've all fallen short. With that being said, I, I want you to know that uh, I was so overwhelmed by this trip is that uh, I, I didn't, I, I, I told my wife and I told maybe a couple other pastors that I'd never go back to watch. That's how hard it was for me. And you say, well, why? Abraham, why was it that hard? You, you see, uh, I had been there a few years ago and it seemed like things had gotten worse. And, and so there's another reason why uh, we should be in prayer for communities such as Watts and, and anywhere else in, our, in, in this country where we know that uh, the enemy is after our, our youth. He's, he's breaking up families. Uh, young men are in prison. And those that are out of prison, at a, as, as soon as they reach a certain age, unless they're well protected, they're being groomed to do the job that someone has gone to jail for. And, and that's why we went. So that I could come back and tell you what I saw. So that you'll know, so your hearts will be stirred to say, Something has to be done. We all can't go to Watts, but we can go maybe 10 or 20, 30 blocks from here, north of here, and find the same situation happening. Probably not as bad, but it's there. You know, when I was a, when I was a kid growing up in Chicago, uh, on, we, we had one station, we had a little soul station that we used to listen to, but at 10.30, there would always be an announcement that says, it's 10.30, do you know where your children are? I believe we should start thinking like that again. It's 10.30, do you know where your children are, and are you praying that they would come home safely? Amen. That's, that's what I saw. I, I saw young teenagers, 15 and 16, acting like they were 20 and 21 already. I, we saw uh, the youth being picked up without their parents, right? But they had to be fed physical food first. They had to be fed breakfast and then given the word of God. And for many, that was 
their meal. That's what Pastor Jose meant by not being a church, but the missions now. That's what I saw. And, and so, you know, you, we, we can't gather up the troops and go in and rescue Watts, but we can lift up that community and, and pray for the lives that I have just relayed to you. Amen? Because it's real. I was, uh, I was reminded today, I was talking to a sister, and she, she's a teacher, and then we were talking about a dad who was ill. And uh, I, I was reminded when in my fourth grade class, uh, my teacher, Miss Kent was her name, and uh, Miss Kent was white, and I grew up in project housings, and somehow or another, her and my mom established uh, a relationship. And uh, Ms. Kent would come and get me uh, every other week or two, and she would take me downtown Chicago, and, and mom would put on me a, a white shirt and a tie, and she would take me to places that I would never go. Just to show me that there was another way. We would say verses at the table before we ate. Her, her husband, and a little daughter. And as I think about missions, that was my first mission trip, but it was for me. And, and she came from her neighborhood to reach me. And I stand before you, what, 45 years later or more to tell you about a lady that was my friend. Guys, we need friendships right now especially if we love the Lord. That's what Watts did to my heart. He changed my heart. He changed my heart. But he changed my heart to come back and say, we, we should change our hearts. And, and you know, guys, you don't have to get on an airplane to minister anymore. You can go right across the street. You know what's happening in your neighborhoods. And if not, we should find out, right? That's what friends do. We go to those who are hurting to pray with them, to take them a box of food. We check on them. We, we do that, right? And, 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 and that's what we did. We, we went to, to check on Pastor Jose and the team, and, and, and they were tired. But it was good. Finally, I had an uh, interesting conversation with a young lady, uh, ninth grader. Uh, during the time of the dinner on a Friday night, uh, the youth leaders sent her over to speak to me, and, and uh, we were just kind of talking at the table, and I asked her about her siblings, and, and one was on the premises, and he was maybe about six or seven years old, little, little guy, having fun. You know, the kids were having a blast. And I says, well, do you have any more siblings? And she said, yes. And I says, is he around? Is he here? And she says, no. She says, uh, he's in jail. And I was like, floored. Like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And how old is he? He's 16. Well, I hope he gets out. And her reply was, I think he'll be there for a long time. Let's pray for the lives of people who are just like us. Just like us, guys. Uh, you know, just because we call it the inner city doesn't mean that uh, lives aren't precious. And, and, and that's my heart tonight, guys. Is, uh, just as uh, a pastor, uh, this man, be usable by God. Be willing to take up the mat, right? And, and if the house is crowded and we can't get in, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get that man or woman or boy or girl to the Lord. I was reminded today of uh, how with the season, Christmas season coming, you know, there were families growing up in our building that never went to church until 
a holiday. And we were reminded not to make fun of those people because that might be their only church. Lives may be saved that day. And so pray that our hearts would be right to receive those who come into the house of the Lord. That's what friends are for. Friends. Friends. Friends check on each other. Friends pray for each other. Friends ask for forgiveness when we've hurt one another. That's what friends are for. The word says that after this man sins were forgiven, that some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak that way, speaking of Jesus? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? He knows our hearts, God. It's, 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 it's good to ask the Lord just for a freshness of our hearts, to remove those things from our hearts that hinder us. It's okay. It's okay. Immediately, Jesus, aware of his spirit, that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said, why are you reasoning? Which is easiest to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. And he got up and immediately picked up the pallet and went out in the sight of everyone, so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, We've never seen anything like this. You know, in closing, guys, uh, I, I spoke about uh, blind Bartimaeus. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege to, to share, and uh, the subject had to do with how much did blind Bartimaeus hear on the road that gave him faith to go to Jesus? How much are we speaking to our friends about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Is it enough to get them before the cross? Perhaps that's something that we need to speak to our hearts about, speak to, to our Lord about. It's just about changing us, just preparing us for the season, the next season, you know, by right, I, I, I didn't think that I would see Watts this way. I, I didn't think that I would come back and, and just be ex extremely upset. But it happened. But now we know how to pray. Now you know what my eyes see. And, and I thank you. I, I, thank, I, I thank this church for the resources that were provided. We thank you uh, for, for all things, and, and I, I pray for the next team, uh, whether it's Newark, whether it's Watts, whether it's Aurora, Denver Metro, uh, wherever the Lord is stirring your heart to go, uh, go. Go. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. And so that's my word tonight, guys. I ask Pastor Ian to come back up and uh, just close. You know, guys, uh, thank you. Thank you. But I wanted to share something with you before I, I leave. Uh, sometimes, guys, uh, we need to do business with the Lord. You know, I, sometimes it seems like Wednesday night is all believers. And, and for, perhaps it is. But sometimes one or perhaps many have found their way into the house of the Lord and, and you need to do business with the Lord. You need to ask of repentance or perhaps some things 
that have gone on in, in your life that are keeping you at a distance from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that time could be now. I, I invite you uh, to come and speak to one of the pastors that would be up front. After that, I, I, I believe in my heart, as always, that there's things that we need to ask the Lord to take off of our shoulders before we leave. Weights that hold us down. We, we get back into the car and, and we, we start the engine up and, and we think to ourselves, you know, tonight would have been a good night to ask the Lord to fill in the blank, to, to wash me of my sins and my shortcomings, to deal with the situations in my home. Be willing to do that if that's your heart tonight. Be willing to humble yourself to the Lord. Amen? Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the word of God, and, and, and we ask, Heavenly Father, that uh, we put no one or nothing in front of you. And so, Lord, we, uh, we ask, Heavenly Father, that we be led by the Holy Spirit, that, Lord, if, we are, uh, if we're prompted to do business with you, then, Lord, have your way with us. Whether we're sitting in our chairs and or whether we come to the front, uh, Lord, we have needs tonight. And you know our needs. You know our hearts. And Lord, just as you healed the, the paralytic man, you forgave him for his sins, and, and then you raised him up. We ask that you would raise us up tonight. That you do his work. You do a work in us, Lord. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.